Roman Rout. It is. It's kind of like a. I love those sort of three barrel names, like John Bernie Ramsey. But <laughs> bad example. Fuck. Let's move on. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> that's the, why was that the first one that came to my mind? Because, to be fair, it's the one that's most said. It's most Catherine famous. Catherine Zeta-Jones. <laughs> she's Welsh. Yeah, she's Welsh. So that doesn't... That's not good. <laughs> it doesn't... Compute. But she, she's an American citizen now, right? Did she not take the citizenship test? Oh, God knows. Oh, she probably did. She, she's married to Michael Douglas, so... Yes, actually, are they, are they married now? Yeah, I think so. Anthony Hopkins took the citizens. Anthony Hopkins is an American citizen now. I'm pretty darn, darn truly down sure. So am I. No, you're not. That's a lie. That's a that's a blatant outright right lie. I can name all seventy two presidents. No, you cannot. <laughs> that's not even seventy two presidents. No, there's fifty something, right? Fifty two. Okay, I think. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so Montana gets in the car. <laughs> And um, Ricky asks her if she would like to take a shower and get cleaned up. Because obviously she's hitchhiking. Probably a bit grubby around the edges. And uh, <laughs> so she agrees. He it seems, it seems nice enough at this point. And she goes back to his house. Uh, as Montana, as we're going to call her, uh, was taking a shower. Um, he went into the bathroom and opened the shower curtain uh, and asked her if he could join. I'm guessing that she probably thought, you know, he's a nice enough guy. Maybe <laughs> I will. Or maybe she didn't feel like that. Maybe she felt threatened. And, like, it's that thing where, um, you know, when people say, like, when men buy women drinks, the sort of, the women feel like they have to, they, there's, like, this expectation they have to give something back. Maybe she felt something like that, maybe. I'm not saying that's the right feeling to feel. Yeah, it's but, not, you know, some, not. But some people may feel that way, right? I, mean, I feel pressure. Right. That's a realm of, outside of my knowledge. I think people think that. I think people think that. Uh, but yeah, no. Maybe she, maybe she felt pressured. Maybe she thought, oh, fuck, I'm going to have to owe this guy something. No, you just yeah, but you don't have to owe him sex. No, I know. I, I know that, right? But there's a, there's a mentality there somewhere, a very wrong mentality, which I think is definitely changing. Well, the past sort of 10 years or so, it's been changing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there's that uh, thing there. Uh, yes, so she uh, agrees. Um, they go into the bedroom. He then tells her, it's time for him to pick up his wife from work. <laughs> so um, obviously she's a bit like, uh, okay, that's uh, strange. <laughs> but oh, whatever. Does he say he can stay there or what? I don't get it. Oh, no, no, no. Um, she goes with him. Um, what? <laughs> when he arrived to pick up Sharon, uh, obviously Sharon was surprised to see uh, another woman in the car, um, as you would be. Uh, when they go back to the house, so they all go back. I mean, she seems pretty chill, uh, this Montana lady, this Betty. She seems pretty down with things so far. Uh, when they go back to the house, uh, Ricky propositioned uh, Sharon with the idea that all three of them would have sex together. Um, okay. How... But why you, you just had sex like how horny can you be where you i don't know people uh they agreed and went into the bedroom uh when sharon appeared naked at the doorway uh montana apparently changed her mind <laughs> so uh she took one look at sharon naked and she's like oh i ain't fucking touching that i ain't touching that mind your purse <laughs> i'm assuming that's how she speaks but maybe she didn't how gross must she have been? I know, that's right. I, I was just actually trying to... Uh, I don't have a picture of her, unfortunately. Picture uh, something. Well, yeah, at, at this point... Uh, but then again, who are we to judge? No, I'm sure everyone is lovely and beautiful, and beauty is only skin deep, apart from when it's not only skin deep. When you get... The purpose of the situation is... Yes, when it's yeah. a, a weird gross situation and the person is a bitch Sharon seems okay at this point by the way but she is not an innocent in the story I will tell you that for sure um, but yeah by this point uh, Montana goes no thank you sir she is gross uh, <laughs> she didn't say that uh, but yeah at this point uh, Sharon and Ricky though minds are set they already know what they want to do uh, so Ricky and Sharon tie Montana to the bed uh, Montana's oh. obviously very not happy with this she's kicking and screaming uh, and the two oh, oh by the way trigger warning by the way anyone uh, for then again if you listen to this podcast for, the whole thing's a trigger warning right um, the two of them uh, soon uh, after they were done uh, they were tired of her and they drag uh, drug her to the bathroom uh, where Ricky uh, then tried to sodomize Montana again. Um, Sharon went to the kitchen to get a knife, uh, and without warning, uh, Sharon uh, came into the bathroom uh, and thrust the knife into Montana. Uh, In a lethal place, or like, oh, is it just like in the arm or something like that? Or is it like 
podcast. It doesn't say at this stage where exactly she stabbed her. Uh, Ricky <sighs> went into the bedroom to get his pocket knife. Um, when he returned, he saw Montana try to get up, so he stabbed her again and again. Oh, my God. Uh, how horrible. What a fucking gross turn of events for that poor woman. Yeah. So not only is she going through uh, all this, but Ricky, again, uh, leaves the room, uh, and this time he goes to get uh, a large hammer. Uh, oh, no. He then uh, bashes her head in three or four times. Um, Sharon, apparently, also wanted to try that bit. Um, what? So she uh, took the hammer from Ricky uh, and proceeded to hit Montana again in the head. When Montana was dead, uh, they just stood there looking at what they'd done. Uh, it's fucking gross. Like I said, I told you Sharon is no innocent party in this freaking story. Both fucking whacked, yeah. man. Whacked. Wickedy whacked. Top whacked. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, but it gets even more whacked. If you want to know exactly how whacked it was, this is insanely whacked. Uh, with uh, Montana lying there, and obviously by hitting someone in the fucking head with a hammer, there's going to be a lot of freaking blood going all over the place. Um, Ricky leans over and starts to fondle Sharon's breasts. Uh, Sharon gets turned on with the whole situation. Um, and according to... Them, uh, Sharon and Ricky, have the most powerful sex they've ever had while rolling round in the blood of their victim. Oh my fucking god! Fucked up. That's another level Ugh. fucked up, right? It's another level of fucked up. Hmm. I don't, I don't like that. I really don't like no, that. No, that that really makes. I don't, me... I'm not meant to like it, but no, I, it's oh, it's just. No, of course yes. I'd be. I would be worried if you said, <laughs> oh, I like that. Oh, I really like that. No, it's, it's just fucking foul. No, it's one of those things Disgusting. which really makes you feel really slimy and gross. Icky, right? yeah. Yes, very icky indeed. Uh, so afterwards, they proceeded to clean the bathroom uh, and load the corpse into the truck of their car uh, to dispose of the body. Uh, they take her to a secluded area and dump her there. Yeah, so that's uh, the end for Betty Jo Monroe. Fuck. They will see you next Tuesday, so that's what they are. Oh, yes. Huge see you next Tuesday. We're not allowed to say that word, though. So we, can't, we have to be careful with that. I didn't say that word. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so th- it doesn't take them long. They sort of go on a bit of a roll with this. Uh, and the next victim was a woman by the name of Sandra Bailey. Um, Ricky had met her at a club that he had frequented. Um, and it's the whole similar situation to Montana. Uh, he took her back to his house where Sharon was waiting. Uh, when Sandra saw Ricky's wife, she wanted to go home. She didn't realise this was a menage a trois situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, of course, the two tie her up and proceed to pretty much carry out the exact same oh. scenario they did with, with, with Montana as well. Don't need to reiterate those grisly, gruesome details. I'd rather not reiterate those grisly, gruesome details. Um, the only oh, okay. thought the two uh, that Sharon and Ricky had afterwards, after this time, uh, was that apparently, according to them, the sex was not as powerful as it was the first time. Ah, oh, didums is all I can say. <laughs> like, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Oh. It's, it's so gross. It's so gross. I can't even compute that level of no. psychopathy and gross fuck I just don't get it. I don't understand it. Well, that's good though, Alan. <laughs> You're not meant to. Unless we are psychologists or psychopathic murderers, sexual sadists, psychopathic murderers ourselves, uh, we're probably not going to really understand this. Um, so I'm glad. They take the body and dispose of it in exactly the same way that they did with Montana. Again, moving really fast. Things are moving pretty darn truly fast with these people. So once the killings get started... I'm I'm wondering if Ricky's got an addictive personality because <laughs> he's got the alcohol thing that he's loving. As mm-hmm. soon as he starts doing that, he goes crazy. He finds killing, and he's like going mm-hmm. full throttle into that. I think he's got a bit of an addictive personality. Oh, he definitely has. He's a drug drug user as well. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, is he? Yes, I forgot to mention that. Side note: he's an <laughs> intravenous drug user. Um, so um, yeah, definitely addictive personality. Fuck. Uh, yeah. Ricky's uh, final victim uh, was a man by the name of Stephen Pfefferman. Uh, Ricky met Stephen in a parking lot that was known for cruising 
for gay men cruising. You know what cruising is? You know what cruising is? I know what cruising is. You know what cruising is. It's that thing where, like, you uh, have a little walk down a a spooky place. (laughs) And there's a lot of penises. And you look at a penis and you look at the eyes. And if you look at the penis a little bit too long, it's go time. (laughs) Cruising 101. (laughs) Cruising 101. Speed 3. Cruise control. (laughs) Cruising control. Cruising control. Cruise control. No, that's not the thing. Yeah. Um, Control? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's the porno version. Oh, it's Sandra Bullock. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Fuck yes. All the way. Uh... Yes, I'm glad we had that, because things now take a turn, as you might imagine. Uh, Ricky agrees to go back to Stephen's home with him. Uh, When they arrive, Stephen and Ricky, uh, they start to uh, enjoy each other a little bit, but not too much at this point. Okay. Um, Stephen uh, just goes, you know what, before we really get into this hot and heavy shit, I'm going to go and take a shower. Uh, When he comes out the shower, uh, he finds Ricky in the bedroom. Uh, and Ricky says to Stephen, hey, I've got a little horny plan. Why don't we tie you up? Oh, no. Which I can't remember which story it was in particular. But we've... This isn't our first rodeo with this type of story, right? Where no. they've tied him. Top dating tip. If it's the first time you're meeting someone, or even the second, third, fourth, fifth time you're meeting someone, don't allow them to tie you up. Unless... Yeah, don't, Maybe. I wouldn't even say, even if you think you trust him, because you can't trust somebody who, like, you've only just met. No. I think you would if need you do, to have... If you do something, something like that, tell people. Is there a controlled way to tie someone up, whether though they can get out? Um, I don't know. I don't know, I'm not into it. But if... No. if I, I wonder if there's, like, a way where you can be tied up, but there is, like, you know, you can still get out sort of thing, but you're just... In, in the fantasy. I think that would be the best way to go. If you're yeah. thinking of getting tied up, get tied up in a way where you can get out. Don't actually, like, have yourself locked down. There's different types of knots, isn't it, really? I think so, but I didn't... I'm not a Navy SEAL. I'm not a Navy SEAL. You're just a SEAL. With this body. With this body, yaddy, yaddy. Uh, I'm a SEAL. <laughs> SEAL. I am SEAL. My skin. No, no, that's SEAL. Oh. Just the SEAL. The, Batman. The Batman mammal, forever. The mammal SEAL. Is it? Seal is a normal, right? That was Seal, right? Yes, that was Seal. Great. But not that Seal. Uh, <laughs> um, where was I? Fuck, we've been digressing so much in this. Yes, so uh, Ricky uh, asked Stephen to time up and um, Stephen uh, agrees, unfortunately. Uh, one very bad decision that he made, clearly. Um, not that it's his fault, but it's a bad decision. Mm-hmm. Uh, after Ricky tied Stephen up, um, he pulls out a knife and starts to tell Stephen that he hates gay guys. He starts like screaming at him, like, fuck, oh I fucking my hate God. Guys. Which would be so terrifying. Imagine being in that situation where you're tied up and you're going, oh, well, this is fucking took a twist. Yeah. That would be fucking, ugh. Um, he then proceeds to stab him with a knife again and again. And one of the things that I did get from this lengthy police uh, thing was that it was apparently 50 times. 50. That's pure hatred. Five, zero. It's, that's just like anger and hatred and everything just coming it's out there. Fueled by something. Yeah. That's not a quick, <laughs> you're gone, Stephanie. That is a, mm. I don't like that. What a bastard. Stephen, even though being stabbed 50 fucking times. No. Still alive. Oh, poor uh, Stephen. I know. I feel. I really, really feel for this guy and the other guy. All these victims I, have died not, in horrible, horrible the ways. The way it... Don't say this in the wrong way, but it's just... When you're like that, it's better off quick. Well, if... Well, if yeah. You get what I mean. Okay, if do you I'm get gonna, what I mean? If I'm gonna get murdered, shoot me through the temple, get it over with. Yeah. Don't stab me 50 fucking times to do all this shit. It gets even worse as well, by the way. Fuck. Um... So, while he's still alive, obviously in excruciating pain, probably in some sort of shock or... I don't know what the fuck he's feeling. Uh, Ricky goes into the kitchen uh, and gets a knife uh, and then stabs Stephen in his throat. Uh, obviously all the time. Hold on. Why has he got another knife? Oh, kitchen knife. 
And what was he stabbing with before then? A bigger, well, 